You're watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Director Juan Picker Simon started working in film because since he was a young boy he always was fascinated by movies. The first movie he remembered seeing was Drums of Fu Manchu. He believed that right then and there he found filmmaking very interesting and mysterious, which is why he wanted to work in film. They offered Juan to direct Lost House on the Left Part 2. He refused it because he didn't find the script interesting enough. Then they brought him a 15 page synopsis and that idea was interesting to him. It was really crazy. He saw it as a challenge to make it moderately believable, and that's when the game started. Juan hadn't directed horror movies before pieces. In fact, he only really did family-friendly films such as Super Sonic Man and Los Diablos Del Mar. At the time he wanted to make a movie about a story about Conan Doyle. Unfortunately, they had problems getting the rights to the material. At this point, the Italian-American producers Dick Randall, Steve Manashin, and Tonino Mori showed up. They offered Juan the directing job for pieces. He was surprised but said, hey, why not? When it came down to Juan writing the script based off the synopsis, he had total control. The producers told him the budget and that was the only limitation there was. He wrote the script in about 15 days. Alternative titles for pieces were a thousand screams and jigsaw. Pieces was shot in Madrid in a mansion. Shooting the film took about five weeks. Later they did some pickup shoots to finish some of the scenes. Besides the young female actors and Christopher George, most actors came to Juan directly to see if they could get a role in the film. Frank Brana was also a stuntman, so he would help Juan out during filming of stunt scenes. Get him! Or I'll blow your brains out. Linda was supposed to play tennis in the film. So Juan asked if she knew how to play tennis. With a bragging tone she said, In California everyone knows how to play tennis. When it came down to filming the tennis scene, she had never held a racket before. They had to get a tennis coach to practice for the scene. One of the film's most iconic scenes is when the girl gets cut in half by her waist. They did this effect by cutting through an actual dead pig with a chainsaw. Later on they made a fake version of the girl cut in half. The actress of the girl actually is the daughter of the woman in charge of wardrobe. When they prepared the effect her mother wanted to see it. When she saw her daughter cut in half with all the blood and guts it had such an impact on her she fainted. The skate and karate scene were filmed additionally because they felt the film was too short. Juan doesn't regret this because he feels like it also adds to the craziness of the film. Before it would be released in America the distributors had some preview screenings. The audience liked it so much that the distributors didn't have a problem putting up the money that was lacking for the wide release of the film. The film was released into 95 theaters in the states of New York. In the weekly box office numbers it got 5th place. Critics weren't too positive about the film. However underground horror movie fans and magazines loved it. At the biggest film festival in Paris the film took first prize for special effects. However there was also a big feminist movement against the film. On some posters women would write sexist pigs with lipstick. Bastard! Bastard! Dick Randall and Juan intended to make a sequel to pieces. Unfortunately nobody was interested in the project. Years later there were talks about a possible sequel or remake. Unfortunately that didn't see the light of day either. With the death of director Juan Picker Simon, the chance of pieces getting a sequel doesn't seem likely. With 2018's release of Halloween, you never know if they'll do a belated sequel to Pieces. Who knows? Until then, we still got the awesome, highly entertaining Pieces from 1982 to enjoy with good friends and beer. You're pissing me off, Roger.